Good morning, homesteaders. Welcome to our homestead. As I've said many times in many videos, water is life. And you need to do whatever you can on your homestead to capture it. Now you could have something like a well, which is really valuable, but if you've seen also our previous videos on this well, you would know that sometimes wells can get contaminated. That's why I recommend, even if you have a pond or a well dug, that you also do some rainwater backup. But today, specifically, I'm gonna be talking about mistakes made when putting in a rainwater system. Let's talk about it. Friends, I'm going over all these points because I want you to live safely with rainwater. Mistake number one that is common is expense, both on the high end and the low end. So either you spend too much money on stuff that you just do not need and is overkill, or you spend too little money and try to just DIY it from random parts you get in the trash, and both of them are really not great. Let's talk about the low end first. Now, I completely understand a lot of people out there don't have a lot of money, and I want you to use whatever means necessary that you have at your disposal to catch rainwater. However, if you're going to rely on it now or someday in the future for drinking water to keep your life sustained, then I would suggest that you spend as much money as you possibly can on good parts and pieces for it. At the same time, I don't want people out there to go bonkers and to build giant underground cisterns and massive structures for their rainwater system when they really can't afford it. It's just not necessary. Know your budget and start off with what you can start off with. Now I'm gonna go into a few details on things that you might want to consider when building your system and mistakes that are often made with those. But right now, kinda go in the middle. You know, spend what you can spend, but get the right parts and pieces. For us, we spent money on these 2,500 gallon tanks, but we bought one first, and then when we could afford it, we bought the second one, and we will be adding more as we save money. We also bought things like this leaf catchment adapter up here, and also things for a first flush filter. So the second one that goes along with expense is sizing your system for your location understand your average rainfall per year and build accordingly. So in Oregon, New Hampshire actually, in places like Miami, your system does not have to be that big because it rains so much. Those are the three rainiest places in the United States. So you may well be able to get away with just 2,500 gallons of storage with no problem at all for the entire year. However, if you are in the desert in Arizona, you are going to want to go as big as you possibly can because I believe it only rains there for a few weeks per year and it's not that much at all. So you've got to catch whatever comes out of the sky. So if you live in a drier area, your expense may be higher than if you live in an area that gets a lot of rain. But again, don't go overboard if it's not necessary. For places like where I live here in East Texas, it's extremely rainy. I call it the monsoon season in the spring. It's constantly raining. And this year we got more rain than we have in a long period of time. However, each summer here in Texas, we've got 100 degree temperatures and it doesn't rain for about two months, maybe more in the summer. So you are gonna have to calculate that and size your system appropriately for us. 5,000 gallons right here is not enough, especially in the summertime. We will use 5,000 gallons for irrigation and for the house in maybe a month. So I need to double the size of my system and I'm working on saving for that right now. So here's the third mistake that is always made with rainwater systems, and that is not covering them properly. What I mean by that is putting screens or covers on everything because Mosquitoes are a huge challenge. Mosquitoes will lay in any body of standing water. What is the number one animal that kills the most humans per year on the planet? That's right, mosquitoes. Mosquito-borne diseases are devastating and they are all over the planet. I've had family members in the Philippines get dengue fever. Let's show you the things that I did on this system and then I'll mention one more. Okay, up here at the top of the tanks, you can see our overflow system. And right here is our overflow pipe. 
and you can see on the end of it, I've got a piece of screen in the end. And that is to prevent mosquitoes from getting inside and all the way up into the tanks to lay any eggs. Also on the top of this leaf catchment system is a screen. And that's not only to catch debris, that's to also prevent mosquitoes from getting down inside. And then also where the water drains into the tank, the connection is extremely tight and sealed. You have to seal off every single little crack or mosquitoes will get in there. So if you are using, say, a garbage can to catch rainwater and that top goes on it, you want to keep that on there, but there's too many gaps in it. You probably want to put a piece of screen on the inside of that uh, garbage can before you even put the top on it. So just take like a giant rubber band, put some screen on it and put it around there and then put the top on it. But do whatever you can to keep those mosquitoes out. For mosquitoes, you can also add into your water what's called a mosquito dunk. And that's a great way to kill off the eggs of mosquitoes that actually do get in and lay in the water. I'll put a link for those in the description below the video. I will also put a link for all the little parts and pieces I used on my system down there as well. Now I know what you're thinking. If you have a pond, you might have a problem because mosquitoes will lay in that open water. However, if you stock that pond with fish, they will normally eat all the mosquito eggs depending on the species of fish. This is number four and that is algae control. You can see behind me, my tanks are black. You want the darkest color, black or dark green, for your rain tanks. If you pick up something like an IBC tote that is a translucent white kind of creamy color, those do not prevent algae from growing inside. And algae is the key. You do not want algae growing in your rainwater system. Algae is a photosynthetic microorganism. So to kill it off or to prevent it in the first place, you wanna prevent light from getting into your water. I'm sure you've read in the news a lot about dangers of certain types of algae and algae blooms getting people sick. They are actually toxic in some cases. So we wanna keep algae growth out of our system. And the best way to do that is to starve it of light. The last one I wanna talk about is sizing your pipes correctly for your system. Because you don't wanna have a lot of water in your tanks, but you just can't get it out at the right pressure and at the right volume. If you need help with that, you should consult with a plumber. But there's no point in having a bunch of water when you can't get it at a far distance because you don't have the right pressure. And it's going to be extremely frustrating for you if you don't have enough volume coming out of your tanks to serve all of the irrigation needs and all of the needs in your home. And in terms of pressure, that's going to be especially true for a gravity fed system, especially if you don't have a booster pump to increase the pressure in your system. And remember, if you're living on a flat piece of land, it's very difficult to get enough pressure from just gravity at the same level. You might have a little pressure if you've got enough water pushing down and pushing out the system. But as soon as that water level drops, you're not going to have any pressure at all. So do research on that and don't make that mistake. Okay, the last mistake that's made with harvesting rainwater is not harvesting it in the first place. It's water from the sky. It's free. It's by far the best water for irrigation. Pretty much every single water system in the United States is chlorinated. Even out here in rural Texas, where our neighbors are still very far away, the water system, the rural water system that serves about 350 homes is chlorinated. And that chlorine is not great for your garden. Now, rainwater can be contaminated depending on where you live. But out here in the countryside, we've got some pretty good water. And you'll be excited to hear that it doesn't take a lot of rain to gather a decent amount of water. The roof behind me and the side of the barn is about a thousand square feet of roof. On a thousand square feet of roof, with just one inch of rain, you can gather 600 gallons of water. So a little over eight inches is going to fill up these two tanks that I have right here. Now I want to talk quickly about filtration. This is not a mistake that's normally made, but the more filtration that you can add to your system, the better. For us, we have leaf guards on the gutters above. That's kind of the first line of defense. That second line of defense is the leaf attachment onto the system itself. Thirdly, I've got a first flush filter. So all of the heavy sediment that does get through comes down and sits in the bottom of our first flush filter. 
right at the bottom of the first flush, I have this little spout here and I can untighten it to actually let some water out. Behind that, to keep that clear, is this screen filter right here. And then I can open up the entire thing here on the bottom to clean this out. And then as I come into the system, I've got this spin down sediment filter here before it gets into my tank. After those filters, the water goes out into the irrigation system and eventually to the house. And I will be adding filtration to the one that's going to the house. But currently we have a Berkey water filter and that serves our family well for drinking water. Friends, if you're interested in helping out the channel, we've always got these t-shirts linked below the video, so go check those out. If you have any questions about our system, please feel free to leave that in the comment section below the video. I really hope this helps you out when you are building your rainwater system. Now go check out these videos right here, which is the full series on the build for our system. Have a beautiful blessed day and we will see you next time. Bye.